have you looked at a beautiful piece of wood with lovely grain in it and thought, oh, to be able to paint in ink or watercolour on that and have it as my background? Or, or maybe a sheet of music or uh, text out of a book? Well, of course you can if you use transparent watercolour ground. But that got me thinking, I wonder if I could make my own. So this week I'm going to share a recipe for clear watercolour ground. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I try and bring a tip, trick or technique that I wish I'd known ages ago. And this week it's that recipe for clear watercolour ground. So the usual recipe for water, homemade watercolour ground is one part of modelling paste to three parts of gesso. So I have managed finally to find transparent modelling paste. Um, this is yeah, deco art modelling paste, clear transparent. Brilliant. It was tricky to find. Very few people seemed to make it and it was always out of stock but yep, yippee I've got it. Um, again I managed to find a transparent gesso. This is a lot easier to find. Before you start I would suggest protecting surfaces and um, protecting yourself with an apron because this stuff is designed to stick. So this is a thick, white, gloopy paste. I am going to empty the entire contents into an airtight container. Given that this isn't a very big pot, I'm going to be super careful about scraping out everything. So the recipe is one part modelling paste to three parts gesso by volume. So that is easy. Oh, there's a nasty skin in there. Let's take that out. That's one. That just proves the importance of airtight containers. Right, that was one. Two. This is a lot runnier as you can see. And then three. I'll mix that really well because the modelling paste is pretty thick and may sit in a, a lump sort of suspended in the thinner gesso if you're not careful. So it's looking very white at the moment and I am hoping that this is going to dry clear. Yeah. It's basically transparent, or should be basically, transparent watercolour ground. How exciting! So now I'm going to prepare the panel and as you can see I've got a um, wooden painting panel, it's birch wood and it's from Sea Whites and I chose one that had a really nice grain because I want to make sure that grain shows through so hence, hence using the transparent. Preparing the panel is super easy, it just takes a little bit of time to dry between the, the different coats um, but you know it really isn't tricky so obviously you unwrap it, you recycle your label, sadly can't recycle the plastic and then I personally use just a small decorating roller to put the the ground on because then you don't get brush marks. Um, obviously you could use a brush, you could use one of those foam applicators, you know whatever you've got but um, say I find a little roller the easiest and I'm really quite nervous about this because you can see it's going on, you know it's milky and I'm assuming and hoping it is going to dry clear. Simply put on a thin layer. If you have any little, you know, dry bits like this that are in, in your mix, which you will have over time, it's, you know, it's just happens, just make sure you pick those off. We'll leave it to dry. It just needs to be touch dry, so probably about half an hour second coat and then a third coat and then I'm going to leave it 24 hours to really 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 dry. 
So the first coat has well and truly dried and it's very exciting because it has dried clear which is certainly a good start and I'm going to really quickly put on a second thin coat so again it looks really milky but we now know at least it does dry clear thank goodness I'll let that dry get a third one on and then let that dry for 24 hours so my lovely panel is all dry and I'm going to start painting this robin which I thought would look really good against the wood um, I'll do most of this in well I'm doing it in ink and watercolour just starting off with that eye and I'll, I'll do most of it as a sort of time lapse because you don't want to watch me taking an hour or whatever it's going to take on this but it's going to be really interesting to see how the ink moves on this surface um, I'm hoping it will be wonderful and I'm hoping it'll be really good for, for the ink and a really good surface to work on and that there's uh, no, no difference between the shop bought transparent watercolour ground and this one we've just made ourselves. You can see that I'd sort of just sketched it out or an outline with pencil. Um, I usually do that. Uh, I, you know, painting without any sort of uh, pencil outline is not a particular forte of mine. So I know some artists do. They're, they're very good. So I'll work with this Indian ink and so far it's spreading nicely. You can see it moving on the surface. Um, and we'll see how it works. Once the Indian ink is dry, this layer, which will do all the work to be honest, um, I will go back in and add the all important red breast of the robin and a little bit of brown etc so that that's my plan it feels good actually it feels good at the moment um, all watercolor ground is pretty rough on your brushes uh, that actually is a sable brush so i probably shouldn't have um, picked it up to use it but i have and it's in my hand now so i can't stop so here's my rather large robin that I've painted in ink on the board that I've prepared with the transparent gesso. And the ink has gone on beautifully and made some lovely patterns. I put a little salt here, etc., etc. So with that thoroughly dry, it's the fun part of putting on some colour. And of course, where else would we start except for um, his red breast, which of course isn't red at all. It's sort of very much a uh, orange but so far I have to say I'm delighted with how the paint flows very similar to the commercial transparent grounds I've used um, and of course we've made it ourselves so I'll carry on now and show you at the end you'd like to see the final piece the lovely grain of the wood still shows through the ink and the watercolor flow nicely I've got a little bit of texturing that uh, worked well 
So as an experiment, I think it worked. What I'll do now is wax it with some um, Dorland's wax and that'll give it a lovely sort of satin sheen, I think, and it'll really deepen the colours. It's been successful, but because the modelling paste is um, hard to get hold of in the UK, it's not as much of a timer or a money saver as I would like. But in your neck of the woods, wherever you are, maybe it, these things are easier to get hold of. So I hope you like that recipe and I hope it works for you. And if you enjoyed this, please think about subscribing because I try and do a film each week. Bye for now.